Hey, I mess. I got some mess. So an arrest was made a week following the stabbing of Christian Obamzeli. Obamzeli died at the hands of his girlfriend, Courtney Tyler, who stabbed him inside his Miami apartment. The OnlyFans star told authorities that she plunged the knife into Obamzeli's chest in self-defense. She had not been arrested or charged with a gruesome slang in the luxury apartment complex. The Twitter is doing what Twitter does. And then after that, I'm going to talk about a case of a man who broke into a rock and roll famer's home and killed his wife. But before we get into that, I'm Andre Matthews from Bras and Murder, and welcome to another interlude. <laughs> So here's what you need to know about the Obamzeli case. So shortly after the news circulator, Twitter began discovering old tweets of Obamzeli, of him degrading black women and expressing his fetish for white women, which he was killed by. This caused several people in the black community online to step back about speaking out on the murder, despite his brother Jeffrey asking for community support and seeking justice. The Obamzeli family posted a statement on Instagram addressing both the tweets and law enforcement's unfair handling of the case. The Instagram post read as, As a family, we strongly disagree with the ignorant and repulsive tweets from my then high school age brother that have recently surfaced. However, the tweets do not diminish our demand for a thorough investigation in Toby's murder or negate the necessity for justice. It's been a week since my brother has been brutally senselessly killed. Courtney Tyler's callous actions have not been met with any ounce of remorse. We've seen videos of Courtney kissing her dogs while covered in what we believe to be our brother's blood and casually getting drinks at a hotel bar days after. In contrast, my brother lays in the morgue. Now, Courtney is herself an OnlyFans girl and has had some clout or some internet notoriety and her old tweets now have also resurfaced. She said many polarizing things like how she only dates rich black dudes and doesn't like being controlled outside of the bedroom. She said all of this on a podcast called We in Miami. Her attorney Frank has argued that Courtney had broken up with Obamzeli and he had stalked her for weeks leading up to the killing. Frank said that Obamzeli attacked her before the killing. Obamzeli family, however, says the attack was unprovoked and there was no abuse or stalking. This is definitely going to be a case I'll be following closely because the tea is piping hot. We shouldn't be shit talking black women, especially as black men ourselves. Uh, it reeks of, what's that? Mm, mm, mm. Self-hatred, and that ain't the wave. But, you know, no one deserves to be brutally murdered by their significant other. And uh, yeah, he deserves justice, even though he has said some very polarizing and shitty things about the people and community that he's now, his family is now you know, pleading to, to seek justice. It's messy, it's messy. Now on to the next case. On December 1st, police were called to the residence in the 1100 block of Major Palace for reports of a shooting around 2.30 a.m. They found Rocka Hall famer Clarence Avion cradling his wife, 81-year-old Jacqueline, suffering from a gunshot wound. She was then transported to a local hospital where she was pronounced dead. Her murderer, 29-year-old Ariel Maynard, who was arrested after calling 911 because he accidentally shot himself in the foot, committing another crime. You think that if you just murdered somebody and you're on the run committing another crime and you injure yourself, the last thing you would probably do is call the police on yourself? You might just like go to WikiHow and just figure it out from home. Maynard broke into the elderly couple's estate in the early, early morning, slipping past their security guards. Inside the home, he shot at 90-year-old Clarence and his wife Jacqueline, shooting her fatally in the back. While fleeing the scene, Maynard exchanged fire with one of the security guards who was all who was unharmed. Who was unharmed. Maynard was arrested about an hour after Jacqueline's murder while burglarizing another home. He called 911 for help after accidentally shooting himself in the foot with an AR-15. Maynard was taken into custody and the evidence, including the suspected murder weapon, was all collected by Beverly Hills detectives from the second residence because not only did he have all the possessions and things that he was stealing at the scene of another crime, but the weapon was there too. He really didn't think any of this through. Maynard initially pled not guilty to his charges of murder and attempted murder 
Still, after a lengthy trial, Maynard was sentenced to 190 years in prison. This is after he laughed about the case on a recorded jail call, which was played during the trial, saying that he expected to only get 20 to 25 years. And I, I, just, um, I guess you can say he really shot himself in the foot. But it's... He also said that he robbed the couple, hopefully to get $50,000 in cash somehow. Maynard has a lengthy criminal record, which started at the age of 12. He was convicted of grand theft in 2010 and pled no contest to domestic violence in 2013. He was sentenced to five years in prison for a robbery at that same time. The sentence he got for this case was so long because of California's three strikes law for repeat offenders. So he has a very dark past, very bad past, being in and out of the system on the streets. Kind of all started when his mother, who was on drugs when she had him, had placed him up for adoption and put him in a foster care system at the ripe age of four days and he didn't find love and support in any of his foster care families and eventually joined a gang to just find us into community like what most people do. Uh, Maynard's public defender also detailed how he became hooked on drugs when he went to prison for the first time. His attorney said ultimately this is a failure of the foster care system and the courts. When a system fails the most vulnerable youths the most horrific things occur. This doesn't take away the grief of the Avion family. We lost a pillar of our community. Which, I mean, facts. He, the system failed him, and the system failed a lot of people and sends a lot of people down very dark paths. Uh, Jacqueline Avion was an accomplished woman with a list of titles. She was the president of the Neighborhood of Watts, a support group for local Los Angeles Child Care Center, and she also served for the board of the Pacific Asian Museum and the Los Angeles County Museum of Arts. So she was a very smart philanthropist and a pillar in a community who was murdered. And justice was served, but the question is posed, did the system really play a role in this murder? Being removed from a home and placed into foster care is a stressful and challenging experience for any child. About 30% of children in foster care have severe a mental, emotional, and behavioral development problems. Many of these children also suffered extreme abuse or neglect. According to the article, No Place Like Home, the U.S. foster care system is broken. Roughly half of the foster youth nationwide never graduate high school, and even less than half can earn money from an employment at any given time. One in five will enter the homeless population, and one in four will become involved with the criminal justice system within just two years after foster care. 21% of former foster youth develop post-traumatic stress disorder instead of a mere 4% of the general adult population. With black children representing 14% of the total child population, they make up 23% of the foster care population. In comparison, white children represent 50% of the total population and only make up 44% of the foster care population, showing a racial minorities are disproportionately placed into foster care systems and become targets of its immobilizing conditions. The system's not good. It's not. It needs to be better. Like if the system was different and real reform was made to set the children and families who enter the system up for success, maybe people like Maynard won't fall through the cracks of society and wind up committing horrendous crimes like murdering an elderly woman for cash. That's my cases, those are my rants. That's my soapbox, this is where I was a murder. <laughs> um, hey, thanks for showing up. Make sure you check out the social medias, you know, like, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a foe. Enjoy the music and I will talk to you later. Kisses from the homie. Time now for your latest weather forecast. We are not playing this 
entertain. You know we not looking to change. Hand on the road. They think we lacking the drive. Boy, you should stay in your lane. Put on the gas. I do not care if I crash. Long as I stick to the plan. What is the plan? I cannot lie for none of you. Long as I know who I am. I'm in control. God got his hand on my soul. And if I land and he got the remote. Made it this far, it's a miracle, miracle. Anything less is cynical, cynical. Staying true, I can't lie in your interview. Tell the truth why you lie with your interview. And your acting is so hypocritical. In control, nothing more, this is minimal. Can't stop now, I'ma grind till I'm boast. I thank God how he held me down the most. Can't stop now, gotta grind till I'm boast. Gotta thank God how he held me down the most. Got the whole team on my back. Uh, 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 uh. I ain't worried about no stats. Uh, 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 uh. No time to compete with so and so. No time to compete with so and so. I ain't got a bad when I'm in my bag. No, no, no. Been through a lot, don't know the half. No, no, no. When I'm on drive, I'ma lose control. Hand on the game, I'ma lose control. It ain't my fault that I'm in control. When I'm on drive, I'ma lose control. On a mission, on a move, got it going no, on. No. Ain't no time to waste my time. We don't slow, slow down. You can have the dimensions. Big dog in dimensions. We be aiming for the fences. I'm in a different dimension. Why y'all be riding the bench? Y'all could just cut through the tension. Graduated from the trenches. No cap and gone. I ain't never need a handout. On my two feet, I'ma stand out. I ain't never took a loss now. Ain't gon' start now at the top now. And I know. Can't stop now. I'ma grind till I'm close. I thank God how he held me down the most. Can't stop now. Gotta grind till I'm close. Gotta thank God how he held me down the most. Got the whole team on my 